Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you inky savages are joining me for episode number 151 of the Penboy Roy Entertainment Podcast. Thanks again stay for joining savage. us. I do the stay savage part, okay? You do the stay inky part. That's how this works, okay? We don't reverse roles. It confuses the audience. Anyway, thank you guys for joining us. This week, I have lots of things that I want to talk about. Products, lots of them are pens. One of them is not. And I also want to talk about the TV show that was recently released on on cable TV, on HBO. Just awesome and fantastic. If you guys know anything about me, you'll know what I'm about to talk about. But first, but first we must talk about our sponsors. Do right? We so we to, got... Do your we bosses are the... Yeah, your bosses are the ones paying me. Um, wait, 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 wait. Last I heard, I think we were... We, 2023 came around where where's the you know like it was an annual thing wasn't it you know yeah do we have to get something going on with that like some sort of I commitment for, I, yeah i totally forgot about talking about, so i got luxury brands luxury brands is definitely sponsoring okay. for this year i i'm not sure about gold spot are you sure do you know anything about this did you talk to karen about it sal or anybody like that should we plug them or not or should we just be like i, I think we should i think we should just maybe like you know it's like you do like sponsorship for 12 months you get one free or something you know like just you, you get an right episode now free. whatever you know no so if they refuse to sponsor if gold spot doesn't want to sponsor this year then i'm just going to charge them the same price for this sponsorship for as i would for the entire year so they can either take the whole year or just take this spot, and it's their or, fault. Or for you, not... or you could be really petty and go through all of the old podcast episodes and just like redact everything. Just go, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do not go. No, but seriously, I, in anticipation of the renewal of sponsorship from Gold Spot Pens, please, please, please check out the affiliate link to Gold Spot Pens in the description below, and be sure to use coupon code Noodle. At same, checkout. I forgot myself. <laughs> yeah. So this month, the coupon code is Noodle. My friend Marilyn, she actually messaged me, and she's like, "Hey, I'm not caught up on my caught up on my episodes. What's the coupon code this month?" <laughs> and I didn't have the heart to be like, "Well, you got to listen if you want to find out." Mm. No, so I just gave her the code. So coupon yeah. code Noodle for an additional savings on all products on the Gold Spot websites, with of course some exclusions applying. With some snobby brands out there, you guys know who you are, and. Make sure that you, again, use the coupon code NOODLE using the affiliate link in the description below to make all your purchases on the Gold Spot Pens website. And, of course, we have to talk about Luxury Brands of America, who's, who is definitely sponsoring the podcast for the rest of the year. I already spoke to Bryce about it. I got to speak to Karen. Ooh. I really – I just I just have so much faith that she would that I felt like it wasn't necessary. I would just send her a bill. But – that might not be the best. I'm not good with business stuff. You are. Mm. That's why you're here to tell me what to do, right? Mm. And I have the inside track because Gold Spot's your employer. So, yeah. If yeah. So anyway, yeah. Luxury Brands of America is running short. They're actually almost out of this pen here. This pen here is called the Waldman Tango Dark Teal Imagination. It is a North American exclusive and is almost sold out. It is limited to only 200 pieces. And once this gorgeous pen is sold out, and it is a gorgeous pen. Look at this. It's got mm. teal. It's made of sterling silver. It is gone forever. So don't wait. If you haven't tried Waldman yet, 2023 is going to be a huge year for the brand. And this pen brand should definitely be on your list. In particular, this pen. This is the Tango. The whole thing is made of sterling silver. It's a gorgeous pen. You can get it with sterling, I'm sorry, you can get it with a stainless steel nib, or you can get it with a gold nib. And they are available at your favorite retailer. It's a cartridge converter pen. Love the way it writes. Even though it's a metal section, it catches your fingers, so it's very comfortable. It posts very well. It's a great pen, solid, feels good in the hand, got some heft to it because it's sterling silver. And it has a 10-year warranty. Now, that 10-year warranty comes with an asterisk. In Germany, they are not allowed to say lifetime warranty due to the confusion it causes. Like, is it the lifetime of the person who has it? Or what if the person has it for a lifetime, dies, but it leaves it to another family member? Is it still warrantied? Is it the lifetime of the product? 
it gets confusing. So the Germans are like, no, don't do that. You can't say lifetime warranty. They have to put a cap on it. The maximum is 10. However, I'm telling you right now, let's say you have a Waldman 10 and a billion years from now, something goes wrong with it. They will still honor the warranty. They Someone's will. gonna dig up an old episode of the Pentertainment podcast some thousand years from now and be like, Pen Boy Roy told me that I could bring this Waldman pen here and it will be repaired for me because it That's is right. lifetime. Yes. Right. So this sterling silver gorgeous dark teal pen is almost sold out. Make sure you check them out at your favorite retailer. And if you're going to a favorite retailer, don't forget about the affiliate link using coupon code Noodle in the description below. I think you right? just missed on like one of the awesome, most key aspects of that pen and that it's, it's like a metal, the, the way that they engrave on that body, the, that Chevron pattern with the lines and everything, and they do it through the lacquer. It, it, it catches the light in such a way that yes, the pen is dark teal lacquered, but when it hits the light, it almost just looks completely silver. Yeah. And, and it just, it just is really. It's 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 a it's a luxury pen. It's not a pen that you're going to buy like a, you know, a very austere looking type of, you know, just regular resin type of pen. This is a pen that you want to have as a lifetime heirloom type of pen. It's 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 got a lot of heft to it like you were saying the sterling silver which is, you know, is is great too. Um but it just has a look and luxury finish of it that is just classy and really is just very nice. Are they available at Gold Spot, or did you guys they check are. out on this one? No, no, they are available. the The entire Imagination, the Tango Imagination collection, is available there. The Imagination collection is pretty cool. I like the Imagination series from Waldman. I also like what's the brown one? The brown one that I like so much. Do you remember the name of that one? The brown. Was... Oh, that's the the. Tuscany, the, the yeah, chocolate I love Tuscany. The, I also yeah. love the Tuscany. I love the Tuscany. It's just that one, the rose gold and the brown mm. PVD finish is ridiculously mm. gorgeous. Nice. And last but not least, please check out my good friend Neil's Coffee Company over at brlcoffeeco.com. And check out all the flavors that they have, all the swag, all the fun stuff that they have. BRLCoffeeCo.com. Use coupon code ROY at checkout for additional savings on all products on the BRLCoffeeCo.com website. And just know that the BRL Coffee Company produces some of the finest beans, the finest coffee with the best flavors, with awesome caffeine contents that just goes down real smooth and it doesn't give you the crackhead jitters, which is, I think, by far, if that doesn't sell you on a coffee, I don't know what does. It doesn't taste overburnt. It's just rich in flavor tones. It's wonderful. And again, no crackhead jitters. Now, we are getting on with episode number 151 of the Penboy Roy Entertainment Podcast. I am so excited and I have so much stuff to talk to you about. I can't wait to hear what Tom has to say about it. So, before we get started with this week's episode of the Penboy Roy Entertainment Podcast, I want to give you guys a quick disclaimer. This podcast is not scripted and therefore will con- blah, 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 I screwed that up. And therefore will contain potty mouth words both from Tom and I, mostly from me. So, be forewarned. Be forewarned. Now, onto the podcast. The Pet Boy Roy Entertainment Podcast. Stage Savage. So, some products I want to talk about today. Not exclusively pens, not just pens. One of them is actually not a that pen. hat. No, that this is actually hat. from. No. This, is the, the, this hat is actually from a cafe in Queens where I go for matcha lattes. It's called oh. The Grey. And the owner is a very good friend of mine. She's also a fish keeper. She also has. Better fish. Better fish. Right. But she doesn't take my advice. Like, I know I know everything there is to know about... I know obsessively what everything that there is to know about successful fish keeping. That's why Dr. Evil back here has been alive and well and kicking since October 25th, 2021. Very nice. Say something else that's nice. I'm waiting for compliments. Oh, Let's oh go. You, come on. Go congratulations. Would you yeah. maybe consider raising shrimp? I hear there's a lucrative business opportunity there, there if you want to sell baby shrimp. And I heard that all it takes is an aquarium and, you know, no? I did the have, shrimp business? I did have a couple of Neocaridina shrimp in that mm-hmm. tank. And they're about maybe a quarter of an inch big. Mm-hmm. And they got eaten by Dr. Evil. Ah. Oh. Yeah. 
Did he so at I least can't... warm up the meal with laser beams? <laughs> no? They were evil laser beams. Evil. So, anyway, yes, so the owner of the cafe, her name is Sunny, and, mm-hmm. you know, she she has an algae problem. She has a... I just, I keep telling her what to do. I'm like, listen, this is what you need to do so that way your fish tank is successful. She's like, okay, I'm just busy. And anyway, she doesn't get around to it. She hires someone to do it. They don't care as much. It's like, you know, but at least the fish are alive. But anyway, yeah, that's good. what was I going to get? I, I have some products I want to talk to you. You were saying I'm products show... not related to pens, not necessarily. No, no. I pointed out necess- the hat yeah. and we went there. Yeah, you're you're really disrupting my concentration. I'm, I'm like, especially ADHD today. Oh, speaking of ADHD, mm. I actually am on Friday, this Friday, I'm, I'm recording a special episode with a, a friend of mine, Eric. Okay. And the whole episode is, ki- is kind of outside the wheelhouse of what we do. Okay. Because I don't know if you know this, and oh, well, you know this, I don't know if the audience knows this, that my whole life had been a constant struggle with ADHD and dealing with the symptoms of ADHD and, and dealing with the failures and social problems that come about with having ADHD. And the reason I'm having Eric on is because he has experience with this kind of thing. He's deeply involved with a charity that actually brings awareness to ADHD in children and destigmatizes things like that. And I had long conversations with him about his experience with ADHD with his kids and stuff like that. Very deep conversations, intense conversations mm-hmm. about it. And that's how he got talking about it. And mm-hmm. what I realized and discovered through conversation with him is things that I experienced that I didn't really know that I experienced until it was articulated by him was okay. there is definitely a stigma of people with ADHD. There's definitely mm-hmm. a lack of awareness when it comes to ADHD. And a mm-hmm. lot of times kids can just be written off as problematic when in reality they just have a disability mm-hmm. that people just misinterpret or they're not aware of. And I'm having him on because he's going to talk about his experience with it and his involvement with this charity that works to bringing, bring awareness to people about ADHD. And the whole purpose of the charity is to improve the lives of children and adults with ADHD and help destigmatize it. So that way people don't have to live like feeling like there's something wrong with me. I'm right. just messed up. Everybody else isn't. And you always feel like just wrong. You just feel wrong everywhere you are, right? Mm-hmm. Your, your relationships don't work out. Your interactions with people are awkward and uncomfortable and, and you, everybody knows it except you, but you realize that people resent you, but you don't know why. And that's something that, you know, is one of the common things that happens with people with ADHD. And, you know, we're going to talk about it. I think that it's going to be a very educating and excellent episode. And yeah, I can tie in how having ADHD and being a fountain pen enthusiast, how that affected me, how it helped me cope with it. I also, okay. I'm gonna, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of things, but I don't know how we got into this. I don't remember what we were talking about. I think it was my ADHD kicking in that reminded me about the ADHD episode that I'm yeah. recording Friday and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> anyway. Hey, oh yeah. I'm really go. hyper. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm really hyper, but I want to talk about some things, some products that I have. One of them, the first one I'm going to talk about is my new watch. I got a new watch. You know, oh, you I did. love watches. Yeah. But this mm-hmm. one, this one is not a tutor. This one is not an IWC. This one is not a, an AP. This one, my friend, are you ready for this one? It's a fossil. It's not a Shinola. It's a, a Seiko? Keep guessing. No. No. Um, I don't know. I don't know watches, so I can't. It's like uh, Mont Blanc. Is it a Mont Blanc watch? No. No? It is. It's a G-Shock watch. Okay. It kind of looks look, like... Look. Uh, what does it look like? Uh, uh, that game. It looks like that... Uh, uh, friggin' the... Uh, what is it called? Uh, it reminds me of that one game. Um... 
I have no idea what you're talking about. No, the... Damn, we're just having a big brain fart right now. Uh, right. Maybe you have ADHD. Yeah, maybe I do too. Yeah. Well, anyway, I got this watch because it's G-Shock. Apparently, it's shock absorbing and stuff okay. like that. And, you know, it's one of these watches. They're inexpensive. It was just like, it was just under 100 bucks. It's in my, it's in a color that I really like, like OG green, mm-hmm. you know. It lights up. It's a digital watch, easy to watch, easy to look at. And I can bang it around and not feel heartbroken about it, unlike my other watches. Oh, Halo. Halo. Reminds me of Halo. Ooh, Halo. Yeah. I love Halo. Yeah, you know what? Like Master Chief from Halo. Kind of looks like that. Everybody knows that. Terrible Mm. show on Paramount TV. I remember watching that show. Video game to television adaptions just typically suck. Mm-hmm. And right? we did cover that, I think, previously. We were talking yeah. about... The yeah. only good thing about the Paramount TV show Halo, the only good thing was Cortana. Cortana was... She stole the show. They used the same actress as who played the voice in the game, mm-hmm. and they used her in the television show. Fantastic. She was the best part of the show. You know? Everything else, absolutely. Everything nightmare. else kind of just sucked. Trash. But I, let, let me just jump into the other products that I want to talk about. This <laughs> thing right here. Let me see if you can identify it. Ready? Okay. Set. Boom, bing. Boom, bing. Oh, that's the boom, Monteverde. Boom, bing, bing. Uh, oh, what is that? It's the Innova, right? Innova. Continue. And they did They did versions with the carbon fiber and the This black is not and... carbon fiber. This is. No. This one is the Innova Formula M. Okay. M for. I have no idea. I'll, let me get the package. Monte Verde. Hold on. I'm reaching into my bag. Okay. So Don't here's the boxing like for it. You know, it's it's just the Innova Formula M. There's information now. When you here's the crazy thing. You're not gonna believe this. But the clamshell box that it came in. Guess what? It's green. Is exactly the same as every other clamshell box that Monteverdi <laughs> makes. But inside is the information card for the Formula M. Mm-hmm. And I, this pen is so cool. It's got stainless steel weaving, so it looks like carbon fiber. However, right. it's not carbon fiber. And mm-hmm. then, like, the black cap, everything is just awesome, right? The way it writes is really well. It's got the Yovo number 6 size nib. This thing wrote like a savage right out of the box. This one is a fine, and I just love this this watch. Listen to this. I'm going to snap the cap on. Oh, I love it. Ooh. Let that sound like, come on. It's not a, it's a, that sounds like a snap cap. It's not magnetic, right? No, it's a snap cap. It's okay. definitely a snap cap. Mm-hmm. It's a really, I love the snap cap on that. It's almost on par with the snap cappiness. Where the fuck is my Don't diplomat? even say, don't even say diplomat arrow because. Almost. It's almost. No, it's not, no, no, it's not no, 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 no. Whoa! The diplomat Whoa. arrow is far better in capping than anything else. Hundred, you could percent. possibly cap in your life. Hundred percent. But they're different. They're yes. different. But I like them both. I kind of think that the the Innova is more has more of a pop to it. Listen, the Innova one... is going to get you killed in the movie with John Krasinski. Uh, the 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 one with the, they have to be quiet. A quiet place. Yeah, a quiet place. That's going to get you killed. The diplomat arrow, you might survive. Yeah. No, you won't. They, they they will both get you killed in a quiet place. Though the diplomat arrow is a fucking fantastic pen. We're talking two separate leagues of pen there. We're not even going to go into that. But I do really adore the Monteverdi Innova Formula M. And can you bring up some pictures? Do you have the Do you have the pen? Are you selling the pen at Gold Spot or no? I, the, from what it must seem like from my relative ignorance on the topic, um, yeah, I, this is, I, I think I've seen some emails about it before, uh, but I don't think it's up on Goldspot just yet, so. So you're not getting it? Uh, well, I, that's, that's yet to be, I don't, I don't know. This, this was announced, uh, just a few weeks ago, I think, so let me see, Formula. Okay. M. If you can share the screen too while I read this, okay, I'm gonna read this out loud. The, the, I, you know, look at this fucking card, dude. It's like the card fits inside the clamshell box, and I wish they could just make the lettering smaller because I can almost see it. 
Oh, that's a trademark this, Monteverde and Conklin thing. They just put the entire wall of text in, like, it's like, like five it's like, point font. Right, 45 pages of information in the space of a paragraph. How the fuck am I... I can almost see it. And you it. know, it's not, know. it's not like, it's also the, it's the, also the marketing verbiage. It's not even just like the helpful, like, this is how to use the pen or this is a warranty or whatever. It's just basically it's, like, it's... we just created the best thing ever in the terms of all of the pens that we have ever made in Monteverde. And this is the reasons why. And this is, it's woven with extra tense steel that is made from like ships and stuff in <laughs> space. <laughs> They, just, they just throw in all their stuff in there. Just and so it's, much but information it's in that little tiny... Time. Yeah, it's on that little tiny yeah. index card, basically. Okay, so I'm going to try to read this so that everybody else doesn't have to go blind reading it. <laughs> the Monteverdi Anova Formula M is an extraordinary writing instrument collection that combines unique materials and cutting-edge designs that will entice not only pen aficionados, but anyone who dreams of life in the fast lane. Inspired by the racing industry, the Monteverdi Innova Formula M collection evokes the power, speed, and elegance of competition. All pens in the collection feature a 304 wire braided stainless steel sleeve with PVD coating over a brass barrel. Wire braiding is often fitted on high performance cars as it offers the best possible protection against mechanical damage. Mm -hmm. The braided mesh is made by winding wire around a core on spools that are rapidly rotating in a circular pattern, weaving the wire together and molding it into a flexible and robust braid. The 304 wire braided mesh's advantage lays in its incredible durability resistance against UV rays, abrasion, and chemical corrosion make it virtually indestructible. Ooh, when they say shit like that, oh, it makes no. me want to... Take this to oh, gun for hire no. and shoot the fucking thing. We're hey, guess what we're gonna do? <laughs> guess what we're when, gonna do? Whenever you start throwing around the words "virtually indestructible," guess who needs to test that? Yeah, hey, mm -hmm. hey, dude. <laughs> guess what we're doing in a couple of weeks? <laughs> we're gonna go to the range. We're gonna rent some N four M fours. We're gonna rent some nine millimeter pistols. And 22 millimeter pistols, and we're going to do what we did with the Paniter Avatar that was also virtually indestructible. We're going to shoot the fuck out of this thing. We're going to videotape it, and we're going to show it to everybody and prove to them that it is not indestructible. Each writing instrument is fully covered with matte PVD coating, providing key performance features while giving additional vibrancy, luster, and durability. That is true. It feels hefty in the hand. It feels solid. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. PVD, physical vapor... Deposition, deposition is a process that uses diverse blah 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 blah, blah technique focus all right, uh, all right um okay so each each pen features cap and a front sections made from solid brass and coated with matte pvd a unique and attractive carbon fiber ring where's the carbon fi oh right here the center band is a carbon mm -hmm. fiber ring offsets the gunmetal appointments and completes the racky design racy design it's so small racy. it's not that i can't read yeah racy design what they mean by racy is like car racy yeah not like racy that, like yeah i don't think that's i don't think you could use that word in just like saying racy like as far yeah as, like without like having that other connotation involved in it right I'm, when you say racy i think of like like, like madonna show. No, like Madonna performing like a virgin for the first time, and there was like controversy because it was too racy. Right. That's the first time I, when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I was watching this movie, a documentary about Madonna, and they were saying her show was too racy mm -hmm. for like public or something. To, like, and you were like, I think down. it's fine. I I was like a teenager, so yeah, You're like this is good I was with me. I was totally okay with her being racy. Okay, let's see. The Innova Formula M collection offers three colors, PVD black, PVD blue, and PVD gold, and is available as either fountain pen roll, who cares? Fountain pen is equipped with a premium <laughs> stainless steel number 60 oval nib engraved with the Monteverdi USA logo, standard cartridge converter. Mm -hmm. The roller balls can be filled with the Monteverdi G2 and W2s, and twist action ball points should just be thrown in the trash. So that's what that says. So the Monteverdi... Innova, 
Formula M. Very cool Formula pen. M. I don't even know what it costs. They sent it to me for my birthday. Niv, thank you for sending me this dollars. pen. So this pen is $100 million. No, seriously, what does it cost? Uh, it looks like the fountain pen retails for 85 The rollerball for This is only 85 bucks. The retail. So you could find it for cheaper because it's usually 20% off. And then no, you, in you the matter have to of be like wrong. three days, like they're going to end up marking these down to like 50%. So <laughs> hate... I, I, you know, I, I really hate to sound like a crotchety old man right now, but I've seen so mm -hmm. many things in my lifetime, in my experience as a, as a pen altier or whatever you want to call it, purveyor yeah. of pens. I'm just going to predict this and you okay. know, just throw this in the back of your head. You don't have to think about this beyond this conversation, but three Let's say two, three weeks from now, you're going to be using that pen. And then something, I'm going to guess a the carbon fiber ring or perhaps the top finial or the clip. Something gets out of whack or okay. falls off or just something happens to it. Just saying, I think that's where this is going. You think so? Point. Yes. I've, I've seen enough of these things to mm. make this prediction, I feel, at least. You could prove me wrong. You can okay. prove me wrong. This is just one guy's just just gut feeling about this. Dude, you, you may very well be right because a lot of times these things have caused. So, yeah, you're right. The MSRP is fifty not $85 with the standard 20% discount that retailers give. For example, I'm looking at Atlas Stationers. It's it's sixty eight bucks. That's mm -hmm. not bad. That's a very good price. But the thing is, you know, with the other Innovas, the original, I heard about the the back end section cracks because eventually it cracks because it's resin, and when they snap it on and off to post, mm -hmm. it eventually weakens and breaks. I don't see that happening with this because this one actually is a brass barrel. It's uh -huh. a brass everything, so I don't think it's going to happen. I have faith in this one not having a problem because the whole thing is brass and metal. You okay. know what I mean? And this one wrote really well right out of the box. That's not to say all of them are going to. Let's let's not fool ourselves. <laughs> so far my experience with it in the last since since the last week and a half that I had it, I love it. It's just mm -hmm. it's solid. I throw it in my pocket. Which brings me something by the way which is mm -hmm. a problem with this pen, not that big of a deal. You gotta lint roll it sometimes because you see these weaves? Mm -hmm. It catches they like catch, little fibers. Yeah, it catches little fibers and then it looks like it's it looks like a fucking hairy, <laughs> like fibrous thing. So you gotta like wipe it off every once mm. in a while because it does catch it. But I think the concept of like all the interweaving, like stainless steel is very cool. I do mm -hmm. like it a lot. I haven't had any problems with it for the last week. I don't think anything is going to break off of it like you were saying. Okay. But we'll have to see, you know. We but the shall. thing I do, yeah, the thing I don't like about like some of these dark PVD coated like gunmetal stuff is okay. every once in a while there'll be like one spot where stainless it steel just, is visible. You yeah, can't it see it. It's just like a dot. And it's like, how the fuck do they miss that one spot? Or did mm. I scratch it? I don't know. Mm. But for for some reason when i have pens like this that i like and there's like a little imperfection it kills me and stabs me in the heart and the soul you know <laughs> which is why i so, know i know for a fact that if there's anything wrong with it i'm getting a text message report it's of like course. tom tom you were right i'm gonna get it at like two o'clock in the morning you're gonna text me <laughs> but how can i how can i not take what you say seriously who has more experience and spends more time around pens than you? You know I, what I mean? I have I have seen many things, my friend. Right. I've seen many things. <laughs> I've seen things, man. I've I seen just call things. it call it an educated hunch. That's all you could call it. So Yeah. So yeah. but so far, liking it, sixty eight bucks, I don't think it's a problem. Listen, here's what I say. If something does go wrong, return it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or if you don't trust it, don't buy it. It's as easy as that, you know? You know, I, I I really like it. I really like it. I like that it's not too expensive. I like how solid it feels. It's like a toss-em, beat-em-up pen. Yeah. It looks kind of like a Pelican. 
a little bit. It looks it's a, a Pelican vibe. A lot of people say that. I don't yeah. see it. I maybe the cap part, maybe. Yeah, the the, but, the cap, the clip, kind of has that little bit of that beakish mm. sort of look. Yeah, I like the original Monteverde Innova. It was all carbon fiber with rose mm -hmm. gold trim and stuff like that. I like that too. This pen is pretty cool. The next thing I want to show you guys also happens Thanks. to be. Did I show you my new watch? Yeah, I did. Yes. <laughs> this one, this one, you're gonna like less. I know just because I know you, Tom. Oh yeah. It came in. It came in a in a very unique looking box. Boom! 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 Oh, the mountains of the world. Mountains of the world. Mountains of the world. Now, listen, just so you know, Monteverdi is not a sponsor. They are not paying me. They're not doing anything like that. Listen, They're just sending just, you free birthday gifts. Yeah, they just sent me these as gifts, birthday gifts, I guess, because it came, you know, a couple days, uh, within days of my birthday. I'm assuming, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe they just happened to send it to me and stuff like that, but... Mm. Like, Fuck, man. I can't. I want to read this for everybody. I just can't. I'm going to hold it up. If you guys can somehow fucking read it because you have super, like, vision. Like, I'm, I'm Well, the people who are listening I to can't. this cannot read it, obviously. So Right. But it doesn't matter because even if they were watching and even if I gave them the card, they're going to be like, I can't see this. <laughs> it's like you need a microscope to, to read this shit. But Mountains of the World is a line from Monteverdi. And you know what I would do if I were them? I would put just a two-sentence blurb, just like a little two-sentence blurb about the pen, and then just everything else in bullet points. Whatever it is, I, let's say for that, that Formula M, you could just put in bullet points, oh, the steel weave thing and, and like the, the different types of refills it takes like that. You don't need to have it be this one par massive paragraph of po prose. Just do like... Two simple lines, a little grab, you know, just to get people's interest, and then go into the features, just list them all out. That's it. That way I, it's I, nice and easy. I think so. I think you're onto something there. And I would just just I would just have their mark here. Pen is good. <laughs> or if you, <laughs> you want to imagine? know more if you want the giant wall of text, just scan this QR code and we'll hit it with you on your phone. So you have no, but to But like, seriously, who do you do out. you when you buy something and you get something like this, like a little informational card, do you read this shit? No, I guarantee you that hardly anybody ever reads any of the documentation that comes with. Dude, pens. this watch that I got, the G-Shock watch, right. there is so much like material in here, mm -hmm. like stuff that's written down, and like, look at this. No it's one, just, no one wants like, to read there, that shit. Come on. Yeah, there's zero percent. There's a zero percent chance that I am one hundred percent not going to read this. Reminds like, me of like all of the, of... it's like all the terms and agreements that you have to abide by when you use like something that's uh, like a, like a social media or you sign up for like an app or something like that. You have to sign your life away and say, I accept or, all yeah. these terms and, and conditions. And yeah, there's no one yeah. reads that uh, stuff. No, nobody reads it. Especially like when you, when you're playing like Call of Duty, you get the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on PlayStation 5, which I got, which is pretty awesome. And there's like eight pages of like, please read carefully. Do you agree to set these terms? It, like, I just scroll all the way the fuck down to where it says, yes, I accept. So I can fucking play the game. Did I spend two and a half hours reading all the pages and scrolling through all? Absolutely not. It could have said anything. It mm. could have said every Tuesday you have to clean litter boxes with your tongue. And I just accepted the terms of that somehow because I didn't fucking read it and I'm not going to. But yeah, and then all, all of a sudden you get a phone call on Tuesday morning, be like, right. "Listen, Roy, <laughs> you sign the terms and conditions. You uh, you take care of that litter box home there." <laughs> yeah, but like I, I don't read any of this stuff, and and especially when the lettering is like it's designed not to enable you to read it. There's no way you can read it. It's so small. No, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this is the mountains of the world. It's an acrylic fountain pen made by Monteverde. Mine came with a. Number six size Yovo Omni Flex nib. Oh, you got the rose I gold like version too. Look at you. Yeah, I got the rose gold version. I I this pen caps and uncaps in exactly one one and three quarters of a turn. Okay. And it is cartridge converter has a threaded converter. I haven't filled it yet or written with it yet, so I don't know how it writes. It could be really good or it could be really bad. Who knows? I can tell you're less excited about this pen than you were the uh, Formula M. 
the Formula M is just a fucking badass. So listen, this one looks tactical. This mm-hmm. one looks tactical, mm-hmm. right? Tactical. Wow. Tactical. Someone should give you a marketing job, my friend. <laughs> yeah, this one looks nice. This one, this one looks nice. I need to write with it. I need. I this one. I gotta see how it works. What I do like about it is it only has one set of threads. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the mountains of the world that's engraved on the acrylic barrel always lines up with the cap. Cool. So I like the fact important. that the acrylic is uh, partially translucent through some of the blocks that you see there. No, so it's not that it's partially translucent. It's just that there are clear, blue, baby blue, mm-hmm. and like light green sections. The clear parts are clear. Yeah. That's you know what, what that's I mean? what I like about it. I like I like it when the visual density of the material allows you to see the depth of it. Yeah. I mean it posts real well. I don't know how it writes, so I can't say anything about that. It's a light pen because it's made of acrylic. I do like the fact that the finial is unified with the cap. It's not like a screwed on finial. Mm-hmm. So the cap And it kinda looks like a mountain ish. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. <laughs> so here's the test. So the cap is just the cap for anybody watching is an L-shaped cap that goes into the cap through a little insert cut in the cap, right? Okay. Now that's good, but we have to we have to do the you have to do the blow test, test to see right? if so, the uh, clip is okay. Right. So I'm going to put the cap on my mouth like it's a whistle and I'm yes. going to blow and hope air doesn't come out the opening where the clip goes into. Oh, no, it's airtight. Airtight. <laughs> airtight. So the chance of this pen drying out capped is less. So that's is there a, that's a an inner cap seal in that too, or no? Yes, there is. Okay. There is a white inner cap seal, right. and it is held in place by a single screw all the way at the back. You're looking over to your side of the house and talking to an invisible person. What's going on there? He's doing a podcast, Sam. I'm doing a podcast, bro. Sam, he's doing a podcast. No, it's my son. He's trying to. Hey. He, I don't know what he's doing. What are you doing? I, I'll tell you what he's doing. He's interrupting the podcast. Is what he's doing. I'm podcasting, dude. Okay. Yeah. Bye. I'll 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 see you soon. Bye. Aww. Aww. Yeah. I don't know. He had he had his Rubik's cube in his hand, so I think he might right. want to show me what he was doing there. But... Right. And he's gonna remember forever that you just brushed him off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You're like terrible. he hasn't done that to me about. A billion times when it comes to <laughs> everything related to his technical digital devices, like playing Rocket League and Minecraft and Roblox and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I asked you to go and do this. No, no. It's like, oh, give me five more minutes. I'm still on a game. You know, it's like, just stop it. Pay attention to me. Happens all the time. By the time he gets it back. You like these glasses? Yeah, they're really nice. Yeah, very, very you know nice. who they are? They're yeah, they're mine. Orders. They're mine. Yeah, I found them. Mm-hmm. I found them. I want to share with the world that I found them. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, these two pens are pretty cool. The a Formula M I've actually written with and I spent time with and held it, taken down all my all my my scheduling. Oh, you know what I've been writing in a whole lot that I really found. I've been using a whole lot. Stand by. Okay. Oh, the giant brick of 2023. Yeah, the the, the endless the endless recorder that is the planner, the regalia and planner of 2023. That thing is I just love it. Massive. It's just huge. Yeah, I love it. I've been I've been using it a lot. It just helps so much with everything keeps me organized. I'm like I'm like super like nerdy and organized and I love it. I love mm-hmm. this thing. Because what would have happened if the pages weren't already planned out for me and the dates and stuff? Mm-hmm. I would have just taken a dot grid and done it myself, but this one does it for me. Yeah. And then it has pages pages And the it bottom. has the so phases like, of the moon. Do you what uh, what practical use do you have for do you have any use for the phases of the moon? Do you use it absolutely. at all for anything? No. Yeah. No, 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 I have no idea. So, okay, you know, I have some shit written in here that I I can't really, really share. But at the bottom, Mm -hmm. at the bottom of it, you know, what I did was, oh, wow, you mm -hmm. cleaned your asshole on Tuesday? Huh? What? No, I clean my asshole once a month, whether I need it or not. But 
All right. So, so anyway, look. So, the bottom over here. I mean, I put I, at the bottom. I put like what I do in, as my workout, right? Mm -hmm. The top half I can't share with people. It's classified. Okay. But like for example, today. No, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. That was yesterday. Licking cat. Litter. I did. Hmm. <laughs> Licking cat litter. <laughs> yes. But yesterday I did like six sets of deadlifts, mm -hmm. six sets of up, upright rows, six sets of pull-ups, six mm -hmm. sets of straight arm pull-downs for the lats, lower back extensions and biceps, three separate exercises. Like I, I keep track of everything. This thing is so cool. I love it. You know? So it could be I like a workout I, log plus a to-do log it's, plus... It's, every, it's an everything log and... Everything. Yeah. Because you have a daily... You have a one one day per page so you have a lot of space yeah to fill it up with a lot yeah of, uh, and then things yeah so like the top part of the date like it'll say like this is like march 10 it has half the pages of lines then there's a little dot pad section mm -hmm. fucking whatever this is i don't know i don't know what that is but it's just so useful and i don't know i've been using this more than the observer mm -hmm. you know and it's just a fat like i'm gonna use this every every fucking year here's what i wish that endless if you guys are fucking listening what I want you to do is stop making the covers out of felt. You know why? Because stickers don't fucking stick to it. Mm. So and it also picks up. It, it's also like you need a lint roller with it too, right? Because it picks up. Not a lot really. Of, no. Not no. Not particularly. Okay. Uh, not particularly. But just the sticker thing. That's the. Yeah, the I really love the paper. I remember you were you were talking smack about the paper like maybe a month ago. Yes. I don't know what that was about. Maybe you had a bad batch. This I was paper salty. Is, I was salty. Huh? I, I was I was mean? feeling salty. I was feeling salty about it, and I think that that oh. might have been the problem, like literally, because it was probably my hand sweat that was causing some inconsistencies with how the yeah. ink was laying on the paper was like beating up on some spots and not quite connecting. But I have been using one of those um, creative blocks mm. all the time. I have it out my desk, and I I like going to it because I know. You know, it's a, it's a, it just handles any type of ink that I throw at it, any type of nib, and mm. it shows off the ink really nicely. So, I, I mean, yeah, I, I was pretty salty a few weeks ago when talking about the, the endless. I was like, no, it was more like a few months ago or so. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, I like it though. I, I, I have, I have changed my opinion a lot on it, and I yeah. think it was more or less user error that I have to admit. Yeah, I mean, I really like the paper. I like it better than the. Nebula, Nebula paper. You know what I mean. The Nebula paper feels a little more waxy, whereas mm -hmm. the the new fucking endless paper feels mm -hmm. drier and at the same time smoother. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I really like that paper. I like I like it a lot. I have. I still used prefer the Tomoe River. I, I, you know, Listen, just... Tomoe River is the OG son. Yeah. You can't beat the Tomoe River. And those fuckers decided to stop making it. Well, know? they have the like, Sanzen Tomori River that's that's around somewhere. I know it's not very widely available in products, but I'm looking. I'm going to keep my eyes open for anything that contains a new Tomori River paper because I want to try it out and I want to have it in something that I could use. I just I don't want just sheets. Like I, if if you're gonna offer me sheets. I, I want something that's bound somehow, either yeah, me like too. a pad me or sheets. notebook. You know, I want to have an actual product that I could use and carry with me and, you mm -hmm. know, practically either jot stuff in or whatever. So No, I, I totally feel you. You need to give me sheets. You need yeah. to give me a notebook. I, sheets, I just can't. Like, if I if I put it in a folder and drop it, I'm, I have sheets everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. fuck that noise. I want a notebook. Just give me a notebook, whatever, you know. But wait, so listen. Can we talk about an exclusive pen coming to Goldspot Pens soon that hasn't released yet by a brand that you and I both know about by a designer who is awesome? Can, can we, we talk? talk about that or can no? we start talking about it? Um, that? Will be still the the e event that will take place that will announce this pen is still at the time of this podcast maybe like two or three weeks from now. Did you get them though? Are they in your possession? at your work not right now no what not the what moment. the what the fuck is wrong with the guy who is supposed <laughs> to send them to you it's it's a it's a long process it's not exactly you know, like it. bing bang boom you know i texted him the other day right just because i was looking at the 
product that we're not talking about. Mm -hmm. And I just, I love it so much. And I'm like, wow, this is great that he made it happen because it's everything I envisioned. And mm -hmm. it's just so unique. Like you have to admit it is so uniquely beautiful. It, it, it is fire. It's yeah. It is just straight it's, fire. It's, yeah. And I just texted him. Love you, man. And he texts me back. Hey, what's going on? What's up? I just texted back. Nothing. <laughs> that was the end of the conversation. <laughs> but yeah, I think that, I think that I'm holding it in my hand. It's just so unique and just awesome, isn't it? Yes. It is splendid. I don't have one here to look at myself, but yeah. 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 Well, you know what it looks like because Josh already photographed it and stuff. And you yeah. Know. What did Kieran and what did Karen say about it? Uh, she said it was the most magnificent, breathtaking thing she's ever beheld, besides her own children. So it's a pretty good vote for it as well. Yeah, that is, is that what she said? Really good. Yeah, good. Word for word. Sweet. Really? <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a stroke to my ego, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, and from what I understand, everybody in the office they they, they, they were pretty. Yeah, they right? they didn't know who it came from, so they didn't have the chance to like poo poo it because they knew that you were working on it. But you mm -hmm. know, so, so they're like, "Oh, this is really nice." It's like, "Yes, this well, Roy unusual, did." It's like, "Yeah, uh, oh, oh, okay." Well, fuck that, <laughs> fuck that guy, <laughs> fuck that guy in, to, to bits. Yeah, no, this is a. I don't think anybody's ever seen anything like this, mm. and. I, I think it's I think people are really going to enjoy it. I can't wait for it to launch. We got to figure out a date. We, may, we should do it together. What do you think? We have to do we have to do something extra special for it. Extra I special. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Got to go above and beyond be... for this. Yeah. Because it's it's a once in a I mean it's a once in ever it has not been done before. So mm. Yeah. Like who gets to design it the as much like I I design every aspect of it except for like you know, you know what I mean, but like I think you were, weren't you the, up until all hours of the nights, like just aligning nibs and you know setting them. No, the feeds no, 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 no. It's no. when I'm up all hours of the nights and I come up with ideas that you end up having to bail me out because I spent <laughs> like ten grand in t-shirts or ten Help grand me. in pens and and that weren't mine, and then I panic because. Somewhere around 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., I realize I fucked up and then have to figure my way out of a hole. And then I have to call you in a panic and then you have to take care of it. But that's, that, that only happened twice, right? Yeah, that's only twice. I think that only happened twice, yeah. yeah. I'm never going to do that again. Where I f f fuck up that bad. Hey, <laughs> Tom, by the way. 2023 resolution. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom, guess what I spent 50 grand on? I have a great mm -hmm. idea. Can, can you help me out? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I just invested heavily in Bitcoin, but it's not really Bitcoin. It's like Nibcoin. It's like the fountain <laughs> non-fungible token. <laughs> So can we spend the rest of the episode talking about something I have a deep passion for since we did like, talk about like pens? fountain pens? No. Yeah. What did you think? Did you see episode two of The Last of Us? I haven't seen that yet. No, I, I saw the episode one, but mm -hmm. I have not seen two. Have you seen two already? I ha of course I have. I, I wanted so, to watch it last night, but my wife I was will like... Sacrifice, I will sacrifice sleep, food, and oxygen to watch that show the moment <laughs> it comes out. Right, so for anybody who doesn't know, I am a huge, huge fan of the Last of Us games that came out on PlayStation Part oh, One and Two. You can see Ellie's uh, statue in the back there. In your yeah, there's Ellie's mantle. statue in the back, and then this is and then the Eber, from he Eber. drew. Yeah, he drew Ellie. Is that a syringe? And... You have a syringe standing up there, or is that a? Uh... Yeah. That so a... what I do, what I do with that, that's a blunt point syringe. Yes, it's a five milliliter blunt point syringe. I have a bunch of those for cleaning pens, but Obviously. I also for this the one that I have there is specifically to suck water out of the fish tank mm -hmm. and put it into into my plant that's next to the window over here to water my plant so I can water my plant with poopy fish water. It's good for the plant. Ah, because it's got the right? nitrates or the yeah the yeah. So it's it, like yeah. it's it's just as opposed to just plain water. That's cool. But yeah, brilliant idea. I came yeah. up with it by Brilliant. watching YouTube. <laughs> by watching YouTube. <laughs> yeah, so, so you want to talk you, about The Last did of you, Us. Yeah, so I love that game. So yes. when the show came out, 
I know that you and I talked about it before, and you were like, oh, HBO is doing it, so they, they're going to go off the rails. I, the I have concerns, like because like I said before, I've been down this road before with Game of Thrones. Yeah. And <clears throat> seeing how the series started right. reasonably close to the book, and then the artistic liberty started to come in. And then George R. R. Martin, just like where you were t- telling me yesterday, is that you know the story's not completely finished. There's still no. going to be another game, but you can imagine that they're going to end up running out of the source material before they in- they introduce this game. So, hundred percent. What I, being a big Game of Thrones fan and seeing the entire series just basically go to shit in the last like season and a half, you know, I have concerns that this is going to well, end up in that same. I see. The thing is, though, here's the thing. Do you know how? So. The writer of the game, the writer and producer of the game, is also the writer and producer of the show. Mm -hmm. And he has the guy who directed Chernobyl directing for him. Now, here's the thing. The director of Chernobyl was a huge Last of Us fan. Okay. And the reason why they got together was because the director of Chernobyl was such a huge Last of Us fan, he had a mutual friend that knew Neil Gaiman, the writer of the game, and he set up a meeting just because he wanted to meet the guy who made his favorite game. Mm-hmm. And then at that meeting, that's when they started talking about making the show. So you have someone who, the guy who created the source material, who is making the source material for the show, very loyal to the game's concept and, and story, with a guy who isn't just a director and played the game because he's making the show on it. He, he was already a fan. Mm-hmm. Right, so the loyalty to the source material is there, and then on top of that, they work hand in hand with the same mission in mind, which is to do what the game was supposed to do. And the game's objective was to it's it's essentially a story about love and. It might not be between a father and daughter, but it's between a man who kind of sees a young girl as a daughter. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And the, the danger and the danger and risk of extraordinary pain that comes from love. That's what the whole story is about. And in order to achieve that, you have to really develop the characters well. And you really have to make the viewer connect with them. And then on top of that, you have to make them understand the connection and the relationship of the characters, which the game did so successfully. And the show, and the reason why people are falling in love with the show is because gamers who played the game, they're seeing the loyalty to the, the source material in the show and they trust it. They're like, Oh, I trust that the story is going to have that connection and make that connection that the game did to people and the people who didn't play the game and are watching the show for the first time, they're experiencing what the gamers experienced, but just more in detail for the first time. I'm almost envious of people who never played the game. Well, how's it feel for you that you know exactly where this is going? How does it feel watching the characters at this point at the beginning? There are, there are little changes. They're not groundbreaking changes. Like for example, in the first episode, while Joel, Tommy, and Sarah were driving away in a panic. In the game, they got T-boned, and that's the accident. In the show, an airplane crashed behind them, and the that caused the car crash. So that, things that, that like petrified that. my wife. By the way, she was like, oh, yeah. "What did you have me watch?" Because that's like one of her, like her fears that she has is like airplanes just crashing out of the blue. Right. So it's when she's. <laughs> It's like it, it was chaos anyway, so the tension's really high, and then all of a sudden, yeah, freaking an airplane just comes crashing out of nowhere. You know, it's just like, what are you having me watch? It's like I didn't know that was gonna happen. I just know there's zombies. You know, it's just like right. I know this is a zombie show. I didn't know they were gonna have crashing planes. Like next thing you know, a tsunami. So gonna that's come out that's the thing, though. Also, this is not a zombie show. It's not. Well, zombies, I mean, I I know? say zombie in a very like generalized sort of way that because because that's how like most people would understand it as it's a it's a right, post-apocalyptic type of scenario where 
a majority of people have been consumed by um, in this case, it's a fungi, right? It's a fungus that yeah. goes and burrows its way into people's brains and makes them go and want to spread the virus by killing other people. Not the virus, spread the spread the fungus by killing other people and then taking over the entire world. And yeah, right. so. So what's crazy, though, is it's such a great concept because the concept is a real thing. Cordyceps fungus infect ants, moths, spiders, make them go crazy, mm -hmm. controls them. And then the fungus grows inside the body of the host. It bursts, it spreads spores, it infects other ants and other bugs mm -hmm. and wipes out entire colonies and keeps spreading. If you actually look at pictures, all the concept art from the game and the show is just things that do happen to bugs in the insect world, mm -hmm. but it's just applied to people. And if that really did happen to people, it would be so terrifying. It would be, yeah. It would be absolutely terrifying. And what this show does is he does a really good job at making it. It's it's such a great show. And what was my opinion knowing what's going on? There's some changes, but I get to see, like, the game is 20 hours long, mm -hmm. right? But more than three quarters of it is scavenging for resources, going into places, looking in the nooks and crannies, you know? And in that time, there's a lot of dialogue between Ellie and Joel that is kind of just incidental dialogue. It just it just happens mm -hmm. and it adds to the characters. But there's a lot of things that are referenced in the game that don't get fully fleshed out. Like the show has time to do that and is able to do that. Whereas the game, they can't do it because you're playing a game, you know? Does it make you want to play the game again from the, from the beginning? Uh-huh. Yeah, it does. You get an itch for it. It does. It does. And it, it does because it's just a really good game. And Pedro Pascal playing Joel, I was I was skeptical about it. And Bella Ramsey playing Ellie, I was skeptical about it because they just look so they don't look like the characters in the game. Mm. But man, when they play the parts, yeah, Pedro Pascal, man. Well, he what plays basically actor. he plays a very very similar role in the mandalorian which i have on my shirt here um he mm. plays a very similar role in that he's like he's like he's not grogu's father but he basically has to protect him mm. and and then grow a bond of affection between the both of them and and you know face dangers together that sort of thing so it's a, it's a it sounds like a very similar type of character although he like the mandalorian doesn't necessarily suffer like as traumatic of a loss and and mm. that I had to, I braced my wife for, I was like, cause like, cause like you really do feel for his daughter at the very start of the show. You're like, oh, she's, she's cute. She loves him. Like they're, they seem like that they're inseparable and everything. I'm like, I'm like, Sam, just, just giving you a heads up. That's not Ellie. Ellie's going to be like the main like character that he pals around with she's probably going to get it pretty soon. So you know, just, to, <laughs> just to like, just to like give you a little bit of that emotional buffer. So, so it's like, yeah, but when she gets killed, it's like, Oh God, that does, that does hurt. It hurts. Bad. It was hard. It was hard to watch, even though I knew that was going to happen because mm -hmm. I played the game. It's just that there's like you in the game, you watch a cut. So you play as the daughter for the first like half hour of the game. Okay. And that's their mech. That's the director's mechanism of getting you attached to the, the daughter mm -hmm. and the relationship between the daughter and the, and, and Joel, the father. Mm -hmm. And then when she, when she bites it, it's almost like a shock. It's a gut punch. It's no, it's a nut punch so hard. It, you feel it in your gut because not only right? does she die, but like you, but you as like, you're controlling her. So then you end up dying and you're like, Holy, holy crap. I just died. Like, that's it. Like, Next. you know, there's yeah. But in the show, they can't give you that same connection. What mm -hmm. they do is they take you through her, her life, her daily life, mm -hmm. the things that make her, the, the things that she does that, that a daughter does to show love for her father, they take you through that. Yeah. And you end up just like, oh, what a great kid. Like, I love this kid. I can see why Joel loves his daughter and, you know, she's awesome and stuff. And then she bites it. And his acting is intense. Mm -hmm. And I think the, after watching it, I'm like the casting for Joel, the casting for Ellie. It's really, it's really good. It's really, in my opinion, yeah. Maybe they don't look exactly like the game characters. Who gives a shit? Because yeah, well, I'm watching... I mean, I don't care because I didn't 
I didn't play right. it, so it doesn't matter. But I'm when starting I, clean slate. Right. But when I'm watching the show, I'm not looking at it saying, oh, Pedro Pascal is acting as Joel. I'm looking at Pedro Pascal and saying, that is Joel. And I'm looking at Bella Ramsey, and I'm not thinking, oh, she's doing a good job being Ellie. No, I'm like watching it, and I'm like, this is, she is Ellie. Mm-hmm. Like the essence, of, like she is that, she is the character. And it's almost like how they look is no longer relevant because they are they are they so good at being that character. character. Yeah. And they in they also they also are playing the character so well it adds more depth to the character than you see in maybe playing the game because the game has one mission. It has to keep you involved in stuff, right? But there's like little nuances with the acting that is so good that I don't think they could have achieved that in a video game because the technology didn't exist for the motion capture, maybe. I don't know. Great friggin' game. But did you know I was I was looking on social media? Because of that show, the game sales jacked up. The game that's been out jacked up by like 400%. Wow. Yeah, so the show is really good. That's only on Episode. PlayStation, right? Or It's only a PlayStation game. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have PlayStation? No, I have. Uh, the kids have the Switch. I have mm-hmm. given up on playing console games a long time ago because I just don't have. I don't have the bandwidth, time, whatever you call it. Even even the ability just to go on my TV and do it like everybody's using the other stuff. So no, mm-hmm. I don't even have. No, can't do it. But I, I will like yeah. enjoy watching the show. This is going to be fun. Yeah. To, well, to I'm, go see, but it. that's another thing too, which I'm so glad they made a show because you know how much I love The Last of Us, and I mm-hmm. love The Last of Us because of the characters and because of the story and because yeah. of, you know. But now, even though you don't have time to play the game, we can still now we can talk about it. We could share you know the I mean? experience. Can, yes. Yeah, it's really cool. We can talk about it as and, long and, as they keep it fairly faithful to the original material, which I'm so. Hoping but that's that the they thing, do. though. I. I'm pretty sure they will for as long as Neil they're Druckmann involved. And, and they're involved because Neil Druckmann is in control of the story completely and totally. Mm-hmm. Right. And he's, and so is the guy who did Chernobyl. I haven't seen Chernobyl. I should probably watch it. Everybody's saying it's really good. Yeah. But yeah. And the guy who did Chernobyl, what's really important is this is not just a gig for him. It's a, it's a, it's a project of passion because he is such a huge, the last of us fan. So he too is going to be as loyal to the source material, which was so successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a successful show because what made the game successful is in the show. So the roots and DNA are there. But anyway, yeah, I really am enjoying it. I'm looking looking forward forward to to watching more of it. I just need to need to get off the podcast with you so I could maybe squeeze in an episode, you know? Having said that, I just want to say, everybody, thanks for joining us for episode number 151. I love you guys. Be well. Be safe. Stay geek.